this morning, we shall be looking at a very, very critical subject, important subject that I believe will help in the season we are in. Habakkuk chapter 2, verse 1, all the way to verse 3. He said, I will stand upon my watch and set me upon the tower and I will watch to see what he will say to me what, and what I shall answer when I am reproved. And the Lord answered me and said, write the vision and make it plain upon tables that he may run that readeth it. Verse 3 is our concern. For the vision is yet for an appointed time. But at the end it shall speak. And not lie. Though it tarry, wait for it. Because it will surely come. It will not tarry. The Lord bless his word in Jesus name. Speaking very, very quickly on the subject. It is for an appointed time. It is for an appointed time. Our objective is understanding what it takes to deal with delay. Actually, the message could have been titled Dealing with Delay. Understanding what it takes to deal with delay. So it is for an appointed time. Under it in bracket, you can write Dealing with Delay. By way of introduction, there are three things I would like us to understand this morning. Number one, that God is the God of the appointed time. God is the God of the appointed time. Genesis chapter 18 verse 14. God speaking to Sarah said, Is anything too hard for the Lord? To Abraham. At the time appointed, I will return unto thee according to the time of life and Sarah shall have a son at the time appointed. Exodus chapter 9 verse 5 and 6 in the plague during the time of the plagues in Egypt the Lord appointed a set time saying Tomorrow, the Lord shall do this thing in the land. And the Lord did that thing on the morrow. And all the cattle of Egypt died. But of the cattle of the children of Israel died not one. This was at the appointed time. Job chapter 7 and in verse 1. We see again, is there not an appointed time to man upon earth? And not his days, also like the days of an hurling, is there not an appointed time to man upon the earth? Job 14, 14, if a man dies, shall he live again? All the days of my appointed time, will I wait till my change comes? All the days of my appointed time, appointed time. Galatians chapter 4 and in verse 2. Just to broaden our understanding. From verse 1 he said, A hair as long as I say that the hair as long as is a child, differeth not from a servant, though he be lord of all. But is under tutors and governors until the time appointed of the father. And finally, Psalm 102 and in verse 13. Thou shalt arise. 
and have mercy upon Zion. For the time to favor her year, the set or appointed time has come. So there is a time to favor her. There is the appointed time. God is the God of the appointed time. The second point says, visions, revelations, promises, and prophecies are for appointed times. Visions, revelations, promises, and prophecies are for appointed times. Whether you caught a vision in scripture of what God wants you to do with your life, or a revelation in the day or in the night, or you saw a promise of scripture, that doesn't look to be immediate. Or there is a prophecy on your life. They are for appointed times. Habakkuk chapter 2 verse 3. The vision is for an appointed time. Genesis chapter 21 verse 1 to 2. And the Lord visited Sarah as he had said. He said it before. And the Lord did unto Sarah as he had spoken. The prophecy. The promise. For Sarah conceived and bare Abraham. A son in his old age. At the set time. The appointed time which God has spoken. At that set time. It came to pass. Genesis chapter 17 verse 21. At the set time. But my covenant will I establish with Isaac, which Sarah shall bear unto thee at this set time in the next year. At this set time. They are for appointed times. We already read Psalm 102 and in verse 13. For the time to favor her. Yeah, the set time has come. Since you, have, you mentioned favor before and you gave it a time, this is the time and that time has come. And of course, Galatians chapter 4, where we read. All right. Now the hair, now I, I say unto you, the hair as long as he's a child, differeth nothing from a servant, though he be Lord of all, but is under tutors and governors until the time appointed of the Father. Go on, out of, all the way to verse 4. Even so, we, when we were children, were in bondage under the elements of the world. But when the fullness of time was come, God sent forth his son, made of a woman, made under the law, and so on and so forth. When the fullness of time was come, there had been a promise, there had been a prophecy, there had been a vision or there had been a revelation that only came to pass when the fullness of time arrived. And your own fullness of time is coming in the name of Jesus Christ. Number three, all things are beautiful at the appointed time. At the appointed time. All things are beautiful at the appointed time. Ecclesiastes chapter 3 verse 11. Ecclesiastes chapter 3 verse 11. Of he has made everything beautiful in his time. Also he has set the world in their heart so that no man can find out the work that God maketh from the beginning to the end. He has made everything beautiful in his time. If there seem to be some level of ugliness around you, things are not fine. They don't look good. He makes all things beautiful in his time. Get ready. Because that shall happen to you. 
in Jesus' name. Now, there is the challenge of waiting. That is what I want to deal with now. The challenge of waiting. There is always a challenge of waiting between the vision and the manifestation. Between the promise and the product. Between the revelation and the realization. Between the prophecy and its fulfillment. There is a challenge most times. The vision was there. But waiting for the manifestation. The revelation is there. What about the realization? The promise and then the product. The prophecy and then its fulfillment. Most times there is a challenge. And I'll enumerate the challenges. They, they come in the form of temptations. That waiting period. Number one is the temptation of discouragement and depression. The temptation of discouragement and depression. Where a person gets disappointed with God. A feeling of being abandoned by God. In 1 Samuel chapter 1 verse 14 to 16 we saw the story of Hannah. How she was praying and in verse 15. Eli said to her and Hannah said, I am a woman of a sorrowful spirit. I have drunk neither wine nor strong drink, but have poured out my soul before the Lord. Don't count me as a daughter of Belial, for out of the abundance of my complaint and my grief have I spoken hitherto. Hmm. A, a feeling of being abandoned by God. In fact, it's the number one feeling. When John the Baptist was in prison, Jesus told him, blessed is he that is not offended in me. The temptation of discouragement, the temptation of depression, most times delay carries depression. Number two is the temptation of bitterness with God and man. Is the temptation of bitterness with God that overflows into bitterness with people. A situation where someone is unhappy with God, angry with God, and like with, and, 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 and there's something they call the transfer of aggression. Consciously or unconsciously, it flows into the people around you. There is a lack of interest in people. A lack of niceness to people. You used to be a very nicely disposed person. Nice with people. No interest in anybody. Or nothing. That was what Hannah said. I am a woman of a sorrowful spirit. I am full of grief. But Joseph overcame that temptation. While he was in the prison and his vision delayed, his dream delayed, he was still nice to the prisoners. Look at that in Genesis chapter 40 verse 5 to 6. Joseph did not, did not get angry with God or, 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 or bitter with God and, and, and the outcome of it was to become bitter with people. He was still able to be nice to people around him. He overcame that temptation. No wonder the vision came to pass. The temptation of bitterness with people. With God and with people. Number three is the temptation of weariness. And the abandonment of spiritual responsibilities. The temptation of weariness. And the abandonment of spiritual responsibilities. At times when a vision, a revelation, a prophecy, a promise. You are trying to stand on is delaying in coming 
There is a tiredness, a weariness. I have studied all the scripture I know to study. I've been praying all this while. What is the use of praying? I've been going to church. I've been doing all the things they say I should do. I've done everything they say I should do. Nothing is happening. So is there any use doing anything anymore? Galatians chapter 6 verse 9 says, Be not weary in well-doing. For in due season we shall reap if we faint not. This is a situation where you find people's prayer life down. Study of the world is down. Fellowship with the brethren is down. Worship is down. Everything is down. Because they feel they are, they've been delayed. And there's no use doing anything they say we should do that will produce any result. That devil is a liar. Number four is the temptation of accusations. God accusation. Self-accusation. Job's wife said in Job chapter 2 verse 9, why don't you just curse God and die? Is God, do you in, in, re, re, retain your integrity? God is behind your problem. Just curse him and die. Where you look at God, God is not fair. God is partial. There are people that God prefers to others. That devil is a bastard liar. And then it can move to the point where even people look at you as if you are the one responsible for your sins. I mean, responsible for your problem. In Job chapter 34 verse 7, all the way to verse 9, Job's friends were accusing him. What man is like Job? Who drinketh up, scorning like water? Who goeth in the company with workers of iniquity? Who walketh with wicked men? Jobo, Jobo. For it, it profited a man nothing that he should delight himself with God. Job, Job, the Job. That God said there is no man that is like Job in his generation. In Job chapter 1 from verse 1 to 3. The same Job was in problem. And his friend said he was the reason for his own problem. You remember the man that was born blind? I think that was Luke chapter, John chapter 9 there about. Where they, they, they were asking Jesus, who committed sin? This man or his father that he was born blind? And his disciples asked him, <laughs> look at me. And, and as Jesus passed by, he saw a man which was blind from his birth. And his disciples asked him saying, Master, who did sin? This man or his parents that he was born blind? How can a person that has not yet been born sin? What sin is responsible for this congenital blindness? He is born blind. Was it his sin that made him blind? That is, did he sin in heaven? He sinned the sin before he was born that made him to be born with a blindness. You see, the way human beings look at things. And you can be confronted with such situations. But that's not something to bother about. The temptation of accusations in the season of delay, in the season of waiting for God to do what you expect him to do. Number five is the temptation of impatience. Impatience that leads to the arrangement of alternatives. Impatience. And that leads to the orchestration of alternatives. Hmm. That is, God has delayed in doing it for me. I will do it myself. That was what Abraham did. As Sarah is not bringing forth children. Let us arrange an alternative. And his wife organized an alternative in the name of Hagar for the birth of Ishmael. And that alternative is with us today as a major global challenge.
the mistake will always fight the miracle. The alternative will always fight the authentic. Sila. The temptation of impatience is the temptation of settling down for something less than the best. Settling down for something less than the perfect. For example, if the man that God wants me to marry does not come and I can't find a husband uh, that is God's will or God can't give me a husband, I will just agree to the next man that arrives. Whether he's married or not is not a problem. Whether he's a believer or not is not a problem. If God, I've waited for God, God hasn't done it, I'm going to do it myself. It happens in both ways. The temptation of settling down for something less than the best. The temptation of compromise. Compromise. Somebody gave me a very terrible story of how no job and there was so much pressure to get a job so she succumbed to doing what others do before they get a job thinking that it was just to get her a job <laughs> and after getting the job she realized <laughs> that getting the job was just the beginning of the demand realized that anything you compromise to get you must compromise to keep the way you get it is the way you keep it how you attend it is how you will maintain it another one said I think he or she bribed <laughs> to get a job think paid some money or so. Something. Just did something. Something crooked. And then after getting a job, either the person who assisted him to get the job or the super, somebody, demanded that every single month he must share his salary with him. If the job is to be kept, we must share the salary. You, you, I, I have a portion in your salary. And the person, oh, the salary is not enough. Should I continue? I said, never. You don't continue with such a demonic arrangement. The temptation of impatience that makes people to orchestrate alternatives. Hebrews chapter 6 verse 12, he said, that he be not slothful, but followers of them who through faith and patience inherit the promises. Patience. That was the temptation of impatience. Number six is the temptation to accept the current situation as final destination. The temptation to accept the current situation as final destination. The temptation to say, well, if up till now I haven't married, it means God doesn't want me to marry. Let me just remain like that. Let me just remain without a child. Let me just remain. There's no problem. I, I, I'm not believing God for anything anymore. The, that is the temptation to settle with the situation. That is, you have experienced resistance unto defeat. That was what happened to the Shunammite woman after she had been good to Elijah. And Elijah said, Elisha, this woman has been good to us. Ask her for me, what should I do? I want, I want to do something. 
Should I speak to the king for her? What should, is there any challenge? The woman said, no problem. That, I mean, she's looking for a child. She has been barren for years. She said, I don't have any problem, no challenge. Second Kings chapter 4 verse 13. What can be done for you? And he said unto him, say now unto her, Behold, you, you have been careful for us with all this care. What is to be done for you? Should I speak to the king for you? Should I speak to the captain of the host for you? And she answered, I am among my own people. I don't have any problem. It was Gehazi that came later and said, Verily, she has no child and the husband is old. That is, this woman has agreed to die barren. It took the mercy of God to change the situation. This, that's the temptation that most people face. Oh, this thing will never happen again. Forget. It is never too late with God, brother. It is never too late with God. That was the temptation that Israel, the children of Israel had. They were in captivity in Egypt until when God delivered them, they were wishing to return. We remember the cucumbers and the onions and the leeks and garlics. All the things they mentioned had no taste. <laughs> None. <laughs> remember. In, in, in Exodus chapter 16 verse 3, Exodus 16 verse 3, the Bible said, and the children of Israel said unto them, We prefer we would to God, we had died by the hand of the Lord in the land of Egypt. When we sat by the flesh pots, lie. And when we did eat bread to the full, for where? Who dash monkey banana? For you have brought us forth into this wilderness to kill this whole assembly with hunger. That's what they are saying. It, it would have died in Egypt. That is, they came to the point where they had accepted the situation. Like the, 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 the situation with Lazarus. Jesus said, this sickness is not unto death. Before he came, Lazarus had died. Died and buried for four days. When he says, show me the grave, they say, don't bother. By now he's smelling. Don't bother. Huh? By now he's thinking. John eleven thirty nine. 39. Forget, we have accepted the situation. You see, you were meant to come on, when he was sick, you didn't come, he died. He didn't come the first day, second day, third day. Now he's there for four days. No, forget about it. And he said, no. I don't promise into the air. It must come to pass. I don't say what I can do. It's, and it's never too late for me to do it. Didn't I say to you, if you will believe, you, you see the glory of God? That is the temptation to accept current situation as final destination. Every such temptation in your life today, I declare it arrested in the name of Jesus. Finally, number seven, is the temptation of backsliding, outright backsliding, going back to the world. It's the worst temptation. You know, we read Job chapter 2 verse 9. Go, curse God and die. It's not, why are you still maintaining your integrity? Go and sin. Go and live anyhow. Has the devil told you like that before? Those who are not going to church at all, can you see their life? They are living well. He will, he will even remind you that when you were a believer, your problems were not like this. When you were a non-believer, when you were in the world, you didn't have a problem like this. Oh, I mean, money was coming anyhow. You had men in your life. You had this and that. That your problem started since you gave your life to Christ. Why are you retaining your integrity? All the people drinking and smoking, what has happened to them? Just do, do everything. That's the lie of the devil. Cause God and die. Never. Never. Even your friends can, may come and tell you are, you, are you sure your life is not reducing? That devil is a liar. Today, the vision is for an appointed time. The revelation, the prophecy, the promise. And it must come to pass in Jesus' name. Now, what do you do in the face of delay? 
of seeming delay. What do you do with the prophecy, with the vision, with the revelation, with the promise of God you have? The word that is going to be recurrent here is the word continuity. Continuity is secret of victory. Whatever is necessary to be done, to be done on a continual basis is key to victory. So number one, continually review the vision, revelation, promise, or prophecy with the word. Continually review the vision, revelation, promise, or prophecy with the word. Habakkuk chapter 2 verse 2 said, write the vision, make it plain that he may run that read it. Review continually. What is, the, what, what is the basis of your expectation? What you are expecting? Why are you expecting it? Check the scripture and review it. The review brings the fire. The review reignites the faith. The review keeps the hope alive. It brings the fire. It reignites the faith. It keeps the hope alive. Continually review the vision, the revelation, the promise, the prophecy with the word. Number two, continually pray the vision, revelation, promise, and prophecy into manifestation. Continually pray the vision, the revelation, the promise, the prophecy into manifestation. You know, I said beginning by introduction, I said continuity is the major key here. First Timothy chapter 1 verse 18, he said, I charge this charge I commit unto you, son Timothy, according to the prophecies which went before on you, that you by them might war a good warfare. By them you might war a good warfare. You continually, continually. This is what I'm expecting. This is what God said. This is what the word says to back it up. And I pray it. Thirdly, continually meditate on the faithfulness of God. Both in your life and in the lives of others. Continually meditate on the faithfulness of God, both in your life and in that of others. Has God ever done anything in your life? He can do it again. Has he done anything in the life of another person you know? He can do it in your life. Malachi chapter 3 verse 6 says, I am the Lord, I change not. Therefore you sons of Jacob are not consumed. Hebrews chapter 13 verse 8, Jesus Christ, the same yesterday, today and forever. Numbers chapter 23 verse 19, God is not a man that he should lie. Neither the son of man that he should repent. Has he said and shall he not do it? Has he spoken and shall he not make it good? Psalm 89 verse 33 to verse 34. My covenant, nevertheless my loving kindness, will I not utterly take from him, nor suffer my faithfulness to fail. My covenant will I not break, nor alter the thing that is gone out of my lips. Once have I sworn 
by my holiness that I will not lie unto David. When we talk about the consistency of God, we are talking about what God did, did yesteryears. He can do today. What he did yesterday, he can do today. What he did in the life of somebody that you heard about, he can do in your life. What he has done in your life before, he can do a higher level later. The God who delivered David from the lion, delivered him from the Goliath. Very important. Meditate on the faithfulness of God continually. Number four, continually charge your faith with light from the word. Continually charge your faith with light from the word. Faith is the victory. Whatsoever is born of God overcometh the world. And this is the victory that overcometh the world. Even our faith. 1 John chapter 5 verse 4. And faith cometh by hearing. And hearing by the word of God. Romans chapter 10 and in verse 17. Faith cometh by hearing. And hearing by the word of God. You charge it. Faith building stuff faith building word faith building light insight revelation you eat them until they eat you up you eat them until you become them number five embrace patience and resilience patience and Resilience. You refuse to grow weary. You are determined to see the end of the problem. The problem won't see your end. You are determined to see the fulfillment of the prophecy. The prophecy will not be fulfilled without you. You refuse to give up, to give in, to give way, to give out. That was what Job said. Job 14, 14. If a man dies, shall he live again? All the days of my appointed time will I wait till my change come. I am waiting. I am here. I am here. The mentality is my result is coming and I am waiting for it. The vision will be fulfilled and I am here to wait for it. The promise must come to pass. And I am waiting. Hallelujah. Hebrews chapter 6 verse 12. It said that you be not slothful. But followers of them. Who through faith and patience. Inherit. The promises. True faith and patience inherit the promises. Hallelujah. So you are just there. Just there. Number six. Continually embrace and discharge expected spiritual responsibility. Continually embrace and discharge expected spiritual responsibility. Continue to do what you know to do as a child of God. I heard that it is persistence that wearies out resistance. In case there is anything resisting the fulfillment of the vision. The fulfillment of the revelation, the fulfillment of the prophecy, the fulfillment of things, continually embrace and discharge expected spiritual responsibility. Galatians chapter 6 verse 9. And let us not be weary 
in well doing. For in due season we shall reap if we faint not. Don't be tired of doing the right thing. At the right time you will see the results. That's another translation. That's my paraphrase translation. Don't be tired of doing the right thing. At the right time you will see desired result if you don't get tired. Can you give me the living Bible version of that or the message Bible? So let's not allow ourselves to get fatigued doing good. At the right time, we will harvest a good crop if we don't give up or quit at the right time. This one says, and let us not get tired of doing what is right. For after a while, we will reap a harvest of blessing if we don't get discouraged and give up. We will reap a harvest of blessing if we don't get discouraged and give up. Let us not become weary in doing good for at the proper time we will reap a harvest if we do not give up. Now listen to this. Some people give up quarter to manifestation. They just gave up when God was just about to manifest. So they don't, they, they, they have never experienced the joy of waiting and seeing results. They just quit and I'm talking from experience. They just quit. There are some exercises and things that I've done and when you thought this thing may not produce results, then BAM! Result shows up. The Bible said, having done all to stand, remain standing. Ephesians chapter 6 verse 13 and 14. Having done all, the, the last part, wherefore take on to you the whole armor of God that he may be able to withstand in the evil day and having done all to stand. Verse 14 says, stand therefore. When you have done all you know to do, remain on your feet. Don't be flat on the floor. When you have done all you need to do, having done all to stand, stand. Praying, fasting, worshipping, giving, don't all to stand, stand. Number seven, continually reach out to others in need. Continually reach out to others in need. Life is a seed and what you sow, you reap. A wise man said, what you make happen for others, God makes happen for you. Matthew chapter 7 verse 12. It said, Therefore all things, whatsoever you would, that men should do to you, do ye even so to them. For this is the law and the prophets. That was the strategy of Joseph. One of the issues that you can face when vision is delaying or expectations are delaying, or revelations of scriptural promises or whatever it is are delayed is to become self-absorbed like I said earlier on. No interest in anybody. You are just on your own. But when you make up your mind to go beyond yourself, then you have gone beyond your chains. In Genesis chapter 40 verse 6 all the way to verse 8, that was what Joseph did. He, he, he looked beyond his problem to begin to solve the problems of the prisoners. Look at this. Yes, it's alright. He looked beyond his own problems to begin to solve the problems of the prisoners. And as he did so, eventually, his got solved. Job chapter 42 verse 10. And the Lord turned the captivity of Job when he prayed. For his friends. God is speaking to someone here. 
Don't let the devil bury you with your challenge. Don't let the devil bury your destiny with because of delay. Don't let everything fail to work because one thing in your life is not appearing to be working. Go beyond yourself. Go beyond yourself. Give someone a counsel. Pray for somebody. Impart somebody's life. Encourage somebody. Lift up the spirit of someone else. And you will begin to see as you make their visions come to pass and assist them, yours begins to come to pass. That was number seven. Number eight, trust God for needed preparation. And maturity for desired manifestation. Again, trust God for needed preparation and maturity. I would have said maturation <laughs> for desired manifestation. Every future you are looking forward to has a sustaining character. For every level of destiny, there is a desired level of quality. Quality of character. Many people, what you are expecting is ready for you, but you are not ready for it. David was anointed for 13 years before he could sit on the throne. In between the anointing and the prophecy of being a king and sitting on the throne was a preparation period. Joseph saw a vision and it lasted 13 years before the vision came to pass. He had processes that processed him to the position. Many of us, it is not that what we our trusting God for is not ready for us. But we are not ready for it. Probably that girl is not fully ready yet for a, a home. Otherwise, they will be divorced almost immediately. I've heard people say, if I had married before now, they would have divorced me under one month. Under one, one year. One month, in fact. There was a story, I think, last week or so where a man slapped his wife at the wedding reception. They have not left there yet. They just, just finished joining. Slapped. Yes, new one. Yes, within the last one week or so. Hallelujah. Galatians chapter 4 verse 1 to 2, we read it. He said, a hair, as long as he's a child, is not different from a servant. Although he be the Lord of all, he, he potentially owns everything. But he remains a child. So he's kept under tutors, under governance. He's put into preparation. Character is imparted unto him. So that he can be qualified to take inheritance. I gave you the example of Joseph and David. Lord. Anything in me that has not made me ready for what you want for me, please show me. Make me ready. Make me worthy. Make me qualified. Father, prepare me. Sandpaper me. Work on my life. Work on my character. Work on my emotion. Work on my attitude. Some of us need a walk in the area of humility, a walk in the area of compassion, a walk in the area of patience, a walk in the area of purity and integrity, where you will get into a position of power and influence and you won't touch the money and you won't touch the glory and won't touch anything. And God is saying, if I usher you to that thing now, you just crash. Because when your authority exceeds your character, calamity is inevitable. 
when you step into a position of authority that 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 your character cannot carry calamity is inevitable inevitable beginning to round off trust god for needed preparation number nine trust god for sensitivity to timing or in fact trust god for the understanding of the times let's phrase it like that trust god for the understanding of the times sensitivity to timing the sons of Issachar, First Chronicles chapter 12, verse 32. They were men that had understanding of the times to know what Israel ought to do. And their brethren were at their commandment. When you understand the times, you step into command. Israel did not understand the time of their visitation, so they suffered for it. Luke chapter 19, verse 42 to 44. He said, if, if you have known, even you, at least in this day, it's talking, oh, Jerusalem, Jerusalem, the things which belong to your peace, but now they are hid from your eyes. For the days shall come upon you that your enemies will catch a trench about thee and compass you around and keep you in on every side and shall lay you even with the ground and your children within you and they shall not leave in you one stone upon another because you don't know the time. Of your visitation in Daniel chapter 9 verse 2 the Bible said Daniel in the first year of his reign I Daniel understood by books the number of years the time all right and as he understood the time he moved into prayer what is the meaning of this there must be a sensitivity to spiritual timing that is what God showed me or what I saw from Scripture or that revelation, or that prophecy, the time of it is around. The, what that does to you is to move you into a shift in intercession. A shift up in prayer. Understanding and, and sensitivity to the times will cause an intensification of intercession for realization. Intensification of intercession. Oh, the time has come. Oh, what God has been speaking about is around this corner. It must come to pass. You refuse to be taken unawares. You refuse for the time to pass and you are still there. Very, very important. Very, very important. Understanding of the times. One of the things that God helped me with in life is to understand on time what he wants to do with my life. Understanding it on time got married on time stepped into ministry on time by his messes by his messes there were various options open including going to the UK for study and practice including several options at a particular junction of my life but phew, this is the time of what I have been telling you about wow shift then separated myself for three days with fasting and prayer and then moved time set yourself apart let me show you your partner in life and ministry it is time for you to know wow and i set myself apart just Yes, and within the course of seven days, not I was locked in for seven days, but just sensitivity. And then, it came. you see, it is time for me to show you. Not time to marry yet, time to know. So that you are not distracted. So that you are not guessing who is who. It's, it saves you, it saves you a lot. Sensitivity to time. And finally, embrace joy, praise, and thanksgiving continually. Continually embrace joy, praise, and thanksgiving in advance. In advance of the manifestation of the vision. In advance of the manifestation 
of the prophecy, in advance of the manifestation of the dream, embrace, continually embrace joy, praise, and thanksgiving in advance. That is, what you are trusting God for has not yet happened. But you are in praise. You are in thanksgiving. That was what Hannah did. In 1 Samuel chapter 1 verse 17 to 19, her countenance was no more sad. Then Eli answered and said, Go in peace, and the God of Israel grant you your petition that you have asked of him. And she said, Let your handmaid find grace in thy sight. So the woman went her way and did it. And her countenance was no more sad. And then they rose up in the morning early, worshipped before the Lord, returned and came to their house to Ramah. And Elkanah knew Hannah his wife and the Lord remembered her. Her countenance was no more sad. That was the key Abraham used. When God promised him a child and the child hadn't come. Romans chapter 4 verse 20. The Bible said he was not weak. He staggered not at the promise of God through unbelief, but was strong in faith, giving glory to God and being fully persuaded that what he has promised, he was able to also to perform. And it happened. He was giving glory to God. He, he, he didn't, he was not weakened in faith. See, giving praise to God in advance is an expression of faith at the highest level expression of faith that was what Psalm 106 verse 12 said then they believed his words and sang his praise then believed they his words they sang his praise it's an expression of faith advanced level faith and then it happens beloved congratulations because your delay is over. Employ these 10 points mentioned continually. Review the vision, the revelation, the promise, the prophecy with the word. Continually pray the vision, revelation, promise, prophecy into manifestation. Continually meditate on the faithfulness of God both in your life and in the lives of others. Continually charge your faith with light from the word. Embrace patience and resilience. Continually embrace and discharge expected spiritual responsibility. What is expected for you to do? Keep on doing. If you keep hitting the wall with a hammer at the same point, it will soon give way. Just keep on. Just keep on. Put the hose of water on the ground and just put it on the same spot. It will make a hole in the earth in a short while. Just the same spot. Continually embrace and discharge expected spiritual responsibilities. Continually reach out to others in need. Con trust God for needed preparation and maturity for desired manifestation. And then trust God for the understanding of the times. And finally, continually embrace joy, praise, thanksgiving in advance. And I prophesy the delay period is over. Look at this COVID period where we are here in the service every single day. Praying, preaching, teaching. I'd like you to think about it. Every day, every single day. Initially, it looks like psh, nothing. But see where we are today. Nations are opened up. What the devil planned is not what you want to hear. No church was meant to meet even this year. What the devil somebody said that some people were proposing that everything should go virtual that people may even prefer just worship online attend classes online go to school online and, and do this and do that online <laughs> but there are courses that can never be done online medicine and surgery never even you can consult a patient online there's something called physical examination history taking physical examination investigations but what the devil planned was massive but tenaciously tenaciously you got encouraged by receiving preaching and prayer on a continuous basis ask yourself who encouraged the preacher <laughs> hello 
ask yourself. Because everybody is human. Just continue and continue and continue and see answers coming. American president stood and he said, from today, I want to classify churches as essential services. And if they say essential services should be open, churches, religious organizations must be open. He has been there all this while. He didn't say that. Battling with the situation. But suddenly, as if a veil lifted, why should abortion clinics open? And they say church should remain closed. Liquor stores are said to be open. Church should remain closed. Restaurants are opening. Church should remain closed. Supermarkets. Markets. No. It's answering us gradually. Very soon, full blast to the regret of the devil. Churches over flooding and busting. The devil will almost shed tears of blood. Hallelujah. Beloved, congratulations because the season of delay is over, frustration is over. Be up on your feet and lift your hands and let's appreciate God. Father, we give you the praise. Father, we give you the honor. Father, we give you the adoration. Father, we give you the worship. El Shaddai, Elion, Ancient of Days, Lily of the Valley. 